Where you scream, don't watch that, watch this And I'll dive down through this hair reflection Hi and welcome to Watch This. I'm CJ Johnson. Thank you very much for joining me. Philippe Platel joins me on the show today. He has curated the Alliance Francaise French Film Festival for 2018. It's a huge festival. It goes all over Australia. It's a national festival, and there are so many films involved. We're going to look at a few of them today. Bonjour, je m'appelle CJ Johnson, et bienvenue à Watch This. Uh, nous parlons aujourd'hui avec Philippe Platel de l'Alliance Française Festival des Films Français. Et à la fin d'épisode, de l'épisode, euh, nous parlons en français pour un petit peu pour euh, tout euh, vous, si euh, vous parlez seul français. <laughs> français, oui. <laughs> Merci. Bonjour Philippe. Bonjour CJ. So, I want to talk to you about a few of the films. How many films are in the festival this 50 year? 50 films this year. 50 films. Mm, yeah, Is this the biggest yeah. ever? Uh, I haven't checked all the archives, but it might be uh, uh, the biggest uh, in, in the biggest number of yeah. films for the festival. Yeah. Well, well that must so. say something about the state of the French industry. Obviously, things yeah. are going well. Yeah, yeah, very well. Every year, the French the cinema industry produces approximately 250 films, which is enormous. 250. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we have 50, so it's a, yeah. it's a, a good uh, yeah. proportion of the yeah. production. Yeah. That's incredible, because what's France population about 70 million? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Australia has nearly 30 million. So say France is two and a half times, being mm -hmm. generous, the population, but we would only produce about 25 films a year. So mm -hmm. to produce 10 times the amount mm -hmm. of films mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. shows that how highly cinema mm -hmm. culture is regarded in France. Mm. It's, uh, yeah, we have a tradition uh, with cinema, of course, cin cinema was created in France. And uh, the industry has always been very uh, productive mm. and prolific. And uh, we have a very, uh, a, a model which encourages uh, the creation of every kind of films, and both uh, super productions, but also more uh, s smaller art house projects, one financing the other. One thing I always notice about you know, a year's worth of French cinema is obviously France has such a great history. There's always historical dramas, mm. but so many French films are simply stories of modern life. Mm. And they're not genre films. They're just simply dramas or comedies or combinations, mm. films that are both funny and dramatic, yeah. just about modern life. Yeah. And that's what I think we need more of the rest of the world needs mm. to make more of because so many French films you can relate to so quickly because they're just about people. Mm. It's, it's true that they're in the lineup this year, but it's, it has always been the case. We, uh, there are many films uh, dealing with what you call uh, modern life. It's true, our modern way of li ways of living and modern families. We had a specific, we have a specific section in the lineup uh, about modern families. And um, to that perspective, I wanted to say a few things about maybe our first section, uh, our first LGBT section as well. Ah, okay. uh, well, there were many reasons, but f of course we wanted to, uh, to uh, we thought it was timely to have an LGBT section in Australia where you've just voted the marriage equality, for instance. Yep. And, uh, but also, uh, there have been so many uh, themes dealing with LGBT uh, themes or, more generally speaking, fa modern families. Uh, like, for instance, um, uh, Diana's The Right Shape is a, is a film. It's, it's a very small film. It's, like you said, uh, both a, a, dra a drama and a comedy, a dramedy, let's say a dramedy. Yeah. It's, the, it's the story of a young woman who is pregnant for a, a, couple, a gay couple. Uh, oh, yeah. And so, but they, they, the film doesn't... Uh, open a debate about it, it's, and it's what is very modern in this film is that it's, it's just take this uh, this thing as granted. It's not a debate. You can have uh, in a very simple story about a family, a modern family, a woman who is pregnant for two guys, uh, and it's just taken for as granted. Yeah, uh, for granted. So I'll, we'll just talk a little bit about some of the ones that I've seen. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and you know, point people to maybe. 
if they're looking at the uh, at the schedule, some of the ones that might pique their interest for reasons that they might not know about. Um, one of the ones is numero un, mm -hmm. which is about a, I suppose, middle-aged woman who is an executive mm -hmm. and she has the ability to rise even further within the corporate hierarchy. And it is about, basically, genderism in the workplace. Mm. And it was astonishing <clears throat> for me to watch this film because with the Me Too movement of right course. now, mm. this film feels so au cajon. Mm. It feels so of the moment. Yeah, it's very, very topical mm. indeed. And, uh, but it, it has always been a topic in the French films uh, and particularly Tony Marshall's films. Uh, you know that Tony Marshall was the, the only uh, female filmmaker to be awarded uh, at the César in 1999 uh, for Venus Beauté Institute with, uh, with Audrey Tautou. She has been the only one uh, awarded uh, hmm. filmmaker, female filmmaker. So it makes, uh, number one, a very um, important film nowadays indeed because mm. it deals with how a female executive can reach uh, one of the highest uh, uh, position in a, in a very important company, for, uh, um, energy company, mm. uh, and it deals about and the the basic idea of the film was uh, six or seven years ago. Tony Marshall had the idea of a series about a very influential uh, uh, group of women, and eventually she transformed it in a film, which is number one. And Emmanuel DeVos is absolutely amazing. Yeah, she's great. She has the perfect mix of. Uh, uh, tenderness and strength, yeah. uh, weakness and strength. Uh, and yeah, there, there is a, a very specific scene, which is for me the, uh, the most beautiful scene in the film. And if not, uh, one, one of the most beautiful scenes you can, you can see in the, in the films in the line of this year uh, is the scene on the, it's on the platform. Uh, and she has an evening with the workers of the platform and Chinese <laughs> customers. Yeah. And Suddenly, in the the less ex uh, the less appropriate on the less appropriate in the less appropriate place, they sing a, a Chinese song, yeah. and she sings this Chinese song with her yeah. Chinese customers. And of course, the Chinese customers are very tough, tough businessmen. But suddenly, it reminds them of their childhood and uh, the, these lullabies, and yeah. it's a tender sweet scene on the platform, yeah. for me is the most poetic yeah. scene of the film. And it says, it sings <laughs> uh, uh, the, um, the, 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 the whole atmosphere of the film, yeah. both about these very uh, tough machinations uh, you, can ha you, can, you have to deal with uh, when you want, to, you, you, you want to have a very important position in France, and all these influential networks, um, but also, real lives uh, and yeah. real people who are um, suddenly in this, uh, in this uh, cyclone of, of, uh, yeah. of influences and, uh, and, and power. It also shows her to be a very, 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 very good business person because mm. the Chinese people that she's entertaining on this rig yeah. have realized all of a sudden that there's no alcohol. Yeah. And that is the problem, and yeah. she needs to solve it. So the way she yeah. solves the problem is she takes them back to their childhoods yeah. by singing this song. Exactly, you know? <laughs> exactly. It's very yeah, clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So the next film I want to talk about really, really fascinated me. It's one of many films in the festival this year that has different titles in French and English. I was surprised by yeah. how many. Yeah. In French, I suppose it's called Petit Paysan, yeah. which means little farmer. Yeah. But in English, it's got the very evocative title of Bloody Milk. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, Bloody Milk makes it sound like a horror movie, <laughs> but it's not a horror movie. It's, no. it is, it's hard to describe what it is because it is so unique. Mm. I guess it's a drama about a young farmer who works on the family farm, uh, specifically with cows. Mm. It, it's a milk farm, I guess. Mm. Uh, and he has to solve a big problem when he discovers a strain of an infecting disease yeah. within his cows. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, this one, it's this nominated for best film at the Cesars. Yes, I don't think it yeah. has a lot of other nominations, but it's nominated yeah. for best film. Yeah. So obviously, people have really picked up on just how unique and interesting it is, mm. and also how fascinating the milieu is, mm. because it's about the strong tradition of farming and agrarianism in France, but mm. in modern day, because mm. he looks like the kind of guy you could see walking down the street in Paris, mm. but he's a farmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, as we said previously about the modern uh, regions, modern countryside, this film is t uh, typical of the films uh, showing the modern farms, the modern French countryside. It's not, there is absolutely no cliché about uh, uh, being a farmer in France. That you, I, I, I think you can't see even a bistro or a small no. cafe in a small village. You don't see a village. It, all, it, it's, it takes place in the farm and only in the farm, uh, which, by the way, is the farm of the filmmaker's family because mm -hmm. he's from a, a, a farm background. And he decided, um, he started his career as a farmer and he eventually he went to the Femis, the, the, one of the biggest uh, cinema schools in France. Yep. And he, become a film, he became a filmmaker. And uh, for this first feature film, uh, he decided to film, the, the, to, to, to film it in his family, family farm. Makes sense. Uh, it makes sense, yeah. So because he knew this place, of course, and he knew every parcel of the, of, the, of the farm. So for him, it was easier. Of course, technically, they had to, it was a challenge because, of course, a, a real farm is not always appropriate to have an old, uh, uh, cinema team, uh, mm. and the other thing was to how to uh, uh, work with cows and to film cows because and it says something funny Hubert uh, Charvel about, about cows is that they are like children. It's like filming children, <laughs> except that they are they weigh nine hundred kilos yeah. and they don't go to school. Yeah. So of course it's not exactly the same uh, the same thing. But and it, it was for him it was very important to respect to be very respectful of the cows. Yeah. For instance, um, he, you couldn't uh, film the drawing scene for more than ten minutes because a drawing uh, process just lasts. 10 minutes, yeah. and if it, you make it longer, it's not good for the cows. So uh, while, of course, the technicians would have loved to uh, spend a, a day to, to film this scene. Yeah. Um, and there are cows throughout the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At yeah, least yeah. 50% and, of the, and the very op cows. The, the opening scene is, is, is wonderful <laughs> uh, because you have all the cows in the... It, it's a dream scene, yeah. and uh, he dreams of the cows being in his, in yeah. his room. Uh, in the kitchen, and it, it's, it's a very funny. And it's there are many films this year in the lineup, mixing very documentary-like scenes yes. with very oniric, onirical yes. uh, uh, scenes, uh, dreamy scenes, uh, yeah. or very poetic scenes, because, like in BPM as well. Uh, because Bloody Milk does have, I mean, it's absolutely a story, yeah. but it does have that documentary element to it because you are taken to a world that is completely authentic. And as you yeah. say, the filmmaker, having come from a farming yeah. background, you know that you're seeing it correctly. Mm. That is how the cows are mm. milked. That is how the cows are have the numbers put on their ears. You know, yeah. you so yeah. you are learning and you're yeah. seeing something authentic. Yeah. And shot with handheld camera at times and all of this, you do get that documentary. Yeah. Now the next film, uh, and the other film besides Bloody Milk that really took my imagination because it, uh, it's so unique, so original, mm. is Four Days in France. Mm. I've never seen a film like yeah. Four Days in France. Yeah, yeah. It just, it's, it's pacing and it's method of storytelling and the unusual way that it frames its characters. It's very, very unique. Mm. Mm. It almost fe feels like a film made by someone who's doesn't really know how to make a film and has succeeded in making a really good one for all mm. the sort of wrong reasons, like yeah. a happy accident. It's so, yeah. it really works, but none of us feels like it should work. Yeah, yeah. It's very bizarre. So it's about a man who one day wakes up and leaves his lover, another mm. man, and goes driving around France, and we won't say why, and his, his lover starts following him, and the main method of pursuit and the main way that they're both sort of guiding their journeys 
is through the app Grinder. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the first grind of film in the in, in cinema, I yeah. guess. Yeah. But it's not a sex film. Not at all. At not all. at all. And even the the the, the filmmaker Jérôme Rebo said that everybody said it's a gay film, and he answered he answered no, it's it's, it's a gay film during four minutes, <laughs> and yeah. the rest of the film is a is something totally different, yeah. and it's just a pretext. Yeah, uh, it's just the the, the gay. Uh, story is just an excuse to make a very interesting film about it's a random film. It uh, is a random film. It's like you, you know when we were young, we had this uh, these books we were the heroes of, uh, and you read the first chapter Choose and you were led adventure. to another one. Yeah. yeah, and it's exactly as <laughs> if the the screenplay was. Uh, written that way randomly with yeah. with Grinder, which is of course not true. Uh, yeah. but. It, yeah, it's it's quite rare in cinema to see a film which is um, which has this randomness, uh, yeah. and it's very exciting because you absolutely don't know where you're going. Absolutely, and, never. And, <laughs> yeah, never, never. And so the the sex encounters are just an excuse to make something much more yeah. uh, uh, broader uh, about France, about yes, yeah, this random journey in France and these random encounters, not only sex encounters, but for instance, he, he, he meets very uh, uh, funny and strong characters and particularly female characters, yeah. part, uh, uh, among who, whom there is uh, uh, one uh, uh, who is played by Laetitia Doche, we will talk about her a bit later. Um, it's uh, maybe it's uh, and this wonderful singer who sings for uh, old people in a in a yes. retire, retiring uh, retirement uh, place. It's yes. it's right. very poetic. Uh, it's it it's a bit melancholic as well. Yeah, and uh, and it's a but very very too. unusual way of seeing France. Yeah. Uh, of course, you will see castles and landscapes. But in a very um, soft way, uh, it's it's very mm -hmm. yeah, it's very beautiful. Yeah. And and you at the same level, the audience will see both yeah, as you said, uh, a truck station or a castle, yeah. and it will be filmed the same way: the mountains and the small uh, crappy restaurant, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. exactly the same way. A film that is a little more. I, I don't know, well, nothing is as original as Four Days in France for me, but Montparnasse Bienvenue. Yeah, yeah. Once again, a different name in French. Yeah, jeune fille, jeune femme, jeune yeah, femme. Yeah, so young girl. Yeah, two totally different titles, yeah. but both <laughs> both are very interesting yeah. and meaningful. Mm. Um, this is all, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite a feat of filmmaking, I suppose. It's nominated for César for Best First Film. Yeah, yeah. But um, for me... The reason for this film, and the reason it succeeds, is because of the actress. Yeah, it's yeah. all about the lead actress yeah. who is in every yeah. single yeah. shot of the yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. I would yeah. suggest she's just amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, it won the. It was already awarded because it won the Caméra d'Or in Cannes. Right. Uh, so, uh, and it was the first feature film, indeed, by Leonor Serrai, yeah. who was a. Uh, had first a literature background and then she went to the Femis. Mm -hmm. And like Hubert Charvel, but he had a farmer background and he became a filmmaker. She yeah. was in literature and she became a, li a filmmaker as well. Yeah. So the Femis is like a, a magical place where you can become a filmmaker with a totally different background. That's, that's nice. <laughs> it's very French. So it's about a young girl <coughs> who, is she... Uh, she's not that young, I suppose. She's probably, I don't know, 20, around that age. 30, yeah, I would say. 30? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh. This is why it, and it, the, the French title, Jeune Femme, says a lot, a, a lot about it because, indeed, usually you wouldn't say Jeune Femme, you would, you would say Jeune Fille, yeah. Young Girl. And the, ah, here young it's woman. Young Woman, right. which means that she's at this uh, turning point of yes. her life. Uh, she's not young anymore, but she's not... Old yet, right? It's but emotionally, uh, yeah, she's yeah, yeah, young. yeah. But emotionally, yeah. yes, she's really she's a at mess. the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. about a woman who's. It's a, mess a very, it's a very Paris. messy film. <laughs> yeah. A very messy film, like the one she played previously, uh, last year or two years ago, uh, which was the Bataille de Solferino, the Battle of Solferino, I didn't by see Justine it. Trier, uh -huh. uh, and she was amazing as well. She carried the, the character. Uh, 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 and yeah, it's, it's a portrait. This film, yeah. uh, Jeune Femme or Montparnasse Bienvenue, is a portrait. Bienvenue means welcome. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, and of course, she d she's not welcomed at all no. uh, in Paris because she's back from a, a, a trip in Paris and she tries to find her lovers back and so on. But, yeah. and, but she can't find her place in, in, the very, in Paris yeah. uh, uh, again. And so she's not welcomed at all. No. So the title is interesting, yeah. Montparnasse, Bienvenue. Um, it's a very good Parisian film because yeah. it, it actually, you know, so many films that I guess we get outside of France about Paris idealize Paris. Yeah. And this shows you, no, it's, it's a big yeah. tr city and it's tough. Yeah. yeah. And there are yeah. tough people there yeah. and it's expensive and it's, yeah. it's hard. Yeah, yeah. And it is about a woman who finds it hard to deal with being an adult anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And she's also dealing with Paris and she's not dealing well. Yeah. 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 A couple it's, of lucky things happen for her and yeah. she learns, obviously, yeah, yeah. but initially, for the first half of the movie, yeah. she really can't deal. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And part of it is Paris. Paris yeah. is sort of the second character. Yeah. I, I, I'm very happy that you chose these films, which indeed are totally out of the cliches about France. Yeah. But they, they give the, uh, a very accurate uh, portrait of France and, and of Paris uh, in the case of Montparnasse Bienvenue. In the film Montparnasse Bienvenue, the Paris is both attractive and aggressive, yeah. sweet, and, and strong as well. Uh, and indeed, yeah, with uh, uh, a charming people, but also very tough. Yeah. Uh, Leticia does, she's just amazing. She, she has all the, this palette of colors that she can play with. And the, the, she, she, yeah, she gives a, uh, an amazing, amazing performance yeah, in this really character, does. which is very complex, uh, like Paris. Yes, I think the, the character embodies Paris yeah. in a certain <laughs> way, uh, yeah. both Charming and repulsive, glamorous and trashy. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting. The the connection between the city and the character is very interesting. Well, glamorous and trashy leads us straight into the final film I want to talk to you about, at least in English. Francis Ozon's new film Double Lover <laughs> yeah, is yeah. glamorous and really trashy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to me, this is him making a Brian De Palma film. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, the yeah. films of yeah, Brian De Palma? True. Yeah, it, He always has psychiatrists and yeah. murder. And mm. this film is a deliberate B-movie, mm. a, a deliberate exploitation movie yeah, for yeah. me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, yeah. So it's about a woman, a very attractive woman, of course, once a model, who starts dating a psychiatrist and then starts seeing his brother, who's a twin, who's also a psychiatrist, and basically it's an evil twin movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, well, it's 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 said to be an erotic thriller, right? Uh, and and indeed it is. Uh, well, it's not that erotic. I no. would like to the audience to feel comfortable. Well, it's yeah. it can be. There are confronting scenes, of course, and it's a François Ozon film, so of course it's a bit provocative. Yeah. But it's not a porn film at all. No. Um, and for the, for he already uh, François Ozon already um, worked with Jeremy Renier and Marine Vacht in different films. Marine Vacht was revealed in. Uh, their previous film, uh, Jeanne et Jolie, uh, Young and Beautiful. Right. And, uh, well, she, she was a model uh, yeah. at the beginning of her career. And <laughs> thanks to François Ozon, she has become an amazing actress. Yeah. She gives this uh, androgynous uh, uh, aspect of the character. And it did. Um, and, and Jérémy Régnier is very, very um, interesting as well. And the, the couple they play is, is very... Um, well, very sexy, of course, yeah. but also very complex. And the way the film is filmed is very interesting. Uh, François Ozon uses a lot, uh, uses very visual uh, things like the symmetry, the geometry, uh, the reflections yeah, uh, the to create a very a mental geography or a mental architecture, uh, which is which looks a bit unreal, yeah. uh, oh, very, like very, very mental. So. Uh, yeah. It's and glossy. You, yeah, it's very glossy. And from the very beginning of the film, you have this feeling that you are watching something which is not real, which yeah. is dreamt. Yeah. Uh, and it's, um, it's, well, I don't want to, yeah. to spoil. <laughs> well, now, uh, if you only speak French, si tu parles français oui. seul, <laughs> uh, voilà, Philippe, um, c'est uh, les films préférés Quels sont en les français? films préférés Oui. Ah, oh, il y en a plein. Euh, donc, j'ai déjà parlé de Custody, Jusqu'à oui. la Garde, qui est vraiment un film important cette année, qui vient de sortir en France en 2010, et qui sera le film vraiment important en 2018, le premier en tout cas. 
Euh, BPM, 120 battements par minute, est un film très important aussi. J'en ai pas beaucoup parlé aujourd'hui, mais c'est le Grand Prix à Cannes. Euh, ça a été le film qui a fait pleurer euh, tout le festival de Cannes, toute la croisette, tout le monde en a parlé. Et pour euh, les Césars euh... Pour les Césars, alors voilà, ça fait une bonne transition avec un autre film d'ailleurs. Donc BPM, c'est donc juste le film de Robin Campillo. Euh, qui parle des années euh, Act Up à Paris et des années de la lutte contre le sida, euh, de l'activisme contre le sida. Euh, on aura d'ailleurs la visite, ça c'est un événement, on aura la visite de l'auteur, du, du co-auteur du film, Philippe Mangeau, en Australie pour le festival, qui va passer à Sydney et à Melbourne, ah. et qui donnera deux talks, un talk pendant le Mardi Gras Festival à Carriage Works le 25 février, euh, sur l'activisme, avec d'autres euh, speakers, et euh, un talk à Melbourne, à l'ACMI, euh, le 2 mars, ah. où là, il parlera du film euh, avec l'écrivain euh, Christos Solkias. Donc ça, ce sont vraiment deux événements. C'est très important parce qu'en en fait, euh, tout le monde voulait avoir soit Robin Campillo, soit Philippe Mongeau. Et on a la chance en Australie d'avoir la visite de Philippe Mongeau qui pourra parler du film. Oh. Et de ses années SIDA et de ses années ACT UP, puisqu'il était un ancien président d'ACT UP. Donc c'est un film, quand on parlait tout à l'heure... Euh, des films qui mélangent les styles documentaires et les styles très oniriques, très filmés. Euh, BPM fait vraiment partie de cela, qui mélange à la perfection ces, ces, ces scènes très documentaires hein, sur les réunions euh, hebdomadaires d'Act Up et des scènes très poétiques de, de nightclub, euh, des scènes avec des baignoires remplies de sang, de faux sang, hein, je précise. Euh, c'est très très beau, c'est un, un film magnifique, comme également L'Atelier, qui est un autre film important, euh, qui a été coécrit par Robin Campillo d'ailleurs, et avec Laurent Cantet, qui est la palme d'or 2008 pour Entre les murs. Euh, euh, L'atelier, j'en parle très vite, c'est un très très beau film aussi. On parlait tout à l'heure des régions, et là c'est typiquement le film qui montre une région de France, le sud, la Ciotat, uh -huh. totalement en dehors des clichés, et qui parle vraiment de l'histoire d'une région, d'une ville, et d'une histoire pas facile, hein, d'une ville qui a subi une crise très grave. Euh, et comment les jeunes de la, de la ville euh, gèrent euh, l'après-crise et surtout gèrent aussi les attaques terroristes. Donc c'est un film très contemporain, et très poétique et très documentaire à la fois avec une extraordinaire Marina Foyce. Donc voilà, donc ces deux films sont très importants. Et 120 battements par minute court, euh, est en compétition pour euh, 14 nominations au César donc les, les awards en France, c'est énorme, 14. Oui. Et un autre, c'est une vraie compétition, quand je dis compétition, c'est une vraie course, parce qu'en fait, il y a un autre film très important de l'année qui court pour le même nombre de, de, de César, c'est Au revoir là-haut, See you up there, euh, d'Albert Dupontel, 14 nominations aussi. Euh, et ça, c'est un film, alors, un période, période movie aussi, sur l'après Première Guerre mondiale. D'ailleurs, je précise qu'on a trois films qui font la commémoration de la Première Guerre mondiale cette année, ah oui. dont celui-ci qui est très important, également Les Gardiennes de Xavier Beauvoir et le film d'André Téchiné, Nos années folles, Golden Years. Donc trois films sur la Première Guerre mondiale, très important. Euh, Au revoir là-haut, c'est un très beau film aussi. Euh, inspiré du prix Goncourt de Pierre Lemaitre, donc d'un roman euh, très important. Euh, et c'est là, pour le coup, alors les deux films sont un battement par minute et, euh, et euh, Au revoir là-haut sont très différents. Euh, Au revoir là-haut, c'est vraiment la grande super production euh, hollywoodienne oui. avec les décors, les costumes, les scènes de bataille incroyables. <rire> c'est très, très beau, très bien filmé. Yeah. Et les acteurs sont formidables. Laurent Lafitte, dans le rôle du méchant, encore, euh, <rire> je dis encore parce que Laurent Lafitte avait joué le méchant dans Elle de Verhoeven avec Isabelle Huppert. Ah oui. Hein. Ouais. Et donc là, il, il a encore un bad guy cette fois-ci. Euh, C'est un, un très, très beau film. Excellent. <rire> Parfait. Merci beaucoup, Philippe Latiel. Merci, CJ. Au revoir. <rire> C'est Watch This. Euh, je m'appelle CJ Johnson. Mm -hmm.